if you think social distancing makes sense during the time where a virus is around, I disagree, but if you think so, fine, then do the social distancing while the virus is around. But if the virus is gone, why continue? Why not going back to normal? You made reference last time to ostensible COVID deaths being found in a shoebox, as it were, in France and Germany, which added deceptively to the sense of a spike in cases. Recently, we in New York were told that 4,000, we'll call them ostensible COVID deaths, were added to the rolls. First of all, what, what do you think of that procedure and how they went about doing it? They, they, we were assured this is making it more accurate, but it, it seemed somewhat arbitrary to, what do you think? I haven't seen another place where the data is so chaotic as in New York, with the potential exception of Germany, uh, which also screwed up a lot. What do you make CDC and uh, the WHO guidance to assume COVID-19 when coding deaths? This is one way to artificially inflate numbers to give the politicians uh, a bit of, uh, to cover their gluteus maximus. Uh, I don't see any other reason why you should call something something that it isn't on the death certificate. Or something that you don't know, if you don't know what it is. So you say you don't know. So that leads us to ask, theoretically, can the appearance of a pandemic be created by nothing more than flawed or even possibly rigged tests and non-standard death coding procedures? Is it possible that this may have happened in the case of COVID-19? Okay, I'm not, uh, I have to admit, I'm not quite sure what the current definition of a pandemic is, because that also changed recently. Uh, but it is a disease that spreads across the world. So you could say, yeah, it is a pandemic. Uh, the question is not whether there is a pandemic. The question is, what are we going to do about it or not? Fair enough. So we agree that there, there is something that's novel, a, a novel coronavirus of some kind is spreading, but it does seem that given these coding procedures and given some of the problems with the PCR testing, that, including contaminated tests, et cetera, that it is possible that the numbers associated with the pandemic are very, very different than what they really are. Uh, first, let me comment on the novel virus. Every virus that spreads is novel. If it were not novel, it would not spread, because then we would have antibodies against it. So having a novel virus is nothing novel. It is just routine. It happens every year. Uh, this year, we had three waves of viruses. And yes, there were different types of virus. But uh, if you look precise into this more carefully, you will see that the influenza B and the influenza A epidemics that we had prior to having the COVID epidemic were probably also called, caused by novel variants of these viruses. Is this virus any more contagious than, uh, than influenza? We have no evidence that there are any fundamental differences in infectivity. Is that the only evidence or the only finding is that in some countries' cases, uh, it seems this virus is more lethal to the elderly uh, than other influ or than influenza viruses typically are, and that might well be. Is there any science behind the actual numbers in social distancing, you know, six feet as opposed to seven or five or, and in terms of, and, and wearing masks and, you know, no cash, things like that. Is there, is there science? What's the science behind that as far as you know? Well, every statement about an empty set is true. That's, that, that's got to be an, an epidemiological joke. No, that, that's a no mathematical state, joke. A mathematical joke. Uh, that is, uh, there is no science. So uh, 
You can say anything about science, but there is none. We don't have any science that tells us how effective social distancing is. We have no comparison. The only comparison that we have is the comparison that in countries like Sweden, like Iceland, like South, South Korea, like Belarus, that it doesn't seem to be much different. So whatever the effect is, it's unlikely to have any major impact. Any of that. If people would be more active, if they would take part in political decisions, if they would be more awake, if they would fight for their democratic rights, this would never have happened. It's a failure of the people to take control of the government and let the government take control of them. Let me ask you the final question then. Um, what, what should we do right now? I mean, it, it seems that the, the flatter the curve gets and the, the less deaths there are, the more lockdown measures are being put in place. We were just asked by our mayor to inform on citizens who were not practicing social distancing. It seems that, um, that you know, we're now being asked to uh, wear masks on the street, uh, no matter where, what we're doing. Um, what, what, what do you make of all this and what, how should we respond? It's ridiculous. Uh, so what we should do immediately, now that we know that we already have developed herd immunity, despite of that social distancing, uh, at least to some level, we are so that we have immunity in a um, quite relevant portion of the population. We should open schools and businesses yesterday at the latest. There is no reason whatsoever to wait. The worst thing that could happen is we get a bit of a rebound that will not be catastrophic that will not overload the hospitals, it will be less than we had so far. That could happen. But every, everything else that we do is a lot worse than what could happen if we, let's say, have another 10, 20,000 cases. Could be. It's not the end of the world. We should go back to be a strong economy, to work, to have a social life, to let children be educated, do everything our society should do. And that lockdown is, there's no benefit. It has only negative effects. Thank you.